Hey there guys, welcome back for another Mortal Realms painting video. This week we are looking at the, uh, the Broken Head statue from issue 46 of the Mortal Realms magazine. So uh, what I've got laid out on the palette here are three greys that I'll be using for this guy. And obviously at the minute I'm using uh, the large uh, dry brush from the Army Painter. Uh, it's from the Army Painter dry brush set. So uh, the three paints that I'm using, or the three greys, are Mechanicus Standard Grey on the left. The centre is Dawnstone, and on the right there is Administratum Grey. Now I've gone ahead and primed the model with uh, just a grey base primer. And all I'm doing right now is just coating him in the Mechanicus Standard Grey. Now what I want to do with this is have the head a slightly different colour to the pillars, the two broken pillars on this part, um, as I want those, as I want those pillars to fit in with the uh, the ruins on that I've done for previous videos. So I won't show how I do them in this video, just to save a bit of time. If you would like to see how the pillars are done, you can check out my ru ruins video um, from a previous issue. I'll put a link for that up in the uh, the corner here. The, uh, the cards and you can go and check that out so like I say first of all I'm just going to get a nice even coat of this all over the head and then I can move on to the other techniques so I'll be back in just a bit once I've got this uh, painted up right so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking the um, the Dawnstone and I'm using the same dry brush but this time in a stippling motion so all I'm doing is just getting some rough sort of pattern over all of the uh, the head here. Not not being too worried about uh, you know any kind of uniformity or anything. Sort of the more random I can get this, the better. Um, but I do want to leave sort of bits of that mechanica standard showing. Um, basically, what I'm trying to do is build this up with the three layers or the three greys um, over a few multiple layers to eventually get a brighter look to it but with that mottled um, sort of weathered stone effect to it. Now obviously some of the raised areas such as the nose and um, some of the hair and that is going to cover a little bit more um, but like I say just keep a nice sort of stippling motion to it and uh, the result will come off nice. So again I'll uh, get on with this we'll come back once I've got this finished and then we can go into the, uh, the shading process. Okay so the shading on this is going to be done in two parts but whilst the first part is wet. So first of all I've got some Athonian camo shade here and this is so that I can get a, a greenish tint to, um, to the stone. Obviously that sort of old weathered um, sort of mildewy type look to it so I'm gonna coat this all over the model I don't want it pooling up too much um, definitely not on the surfaces the surfaces I just want to stain with this um, the recesses can get a little bit of pooling in there but really um, that will be used for the next stage and like I said whilst the uh, the Athonian camo shade is still wet I'm going to take this Agrax Earth shade and go straight over the top of it. Now I know I'm dipping it into the pot with a little bit of green on the brush but in honesty I'm not picking up that much off the uh, the model as like I said I didn't let it pool anywhere it was just for the, the staining. The pooling I want to happen with this. I want it to settle down into those recesses and darken those up and obviously it's going to leave some of that green tint to the rest of the model but it's going to get dulled down a little bit with this uh, the Agrax Earth Shade. So again, I'm going to get this all over the head, making sure that it does uh, you know, settle nicely into those recesses. I'll get on with this, let it dry for about 15 to 20 minutes, and then we'll come back and uh, get to work with the rest of it. Okay, so now that the, uh, the washes have had time to fully dry, I'm now taking some Dawnstone here and just dry brushing, so this I have removed uh, 
you know, the majority of the paint off the brush here. And all I'm doing is picking off again some of those raised areas. Um, I'll do this first with the Dawnstone, um, trying to, like I say, just catch those edges um, over the majority of the model. And then some of the more upper areas, um, such as uh, the top of the hair, as I'm doing here, I'll go back over with the Administratum Grey and just very lightly catch those areas as well, just to brighten them up again a little bit more. Okay, so at this point I've gone ahead and finished the um, the stones and the rubble and the pillars around the base. Like I said, you can check the card in the corner for that. Um, but I've decided that I wanted to add just a little bit of uh, colour difference just to uh, make a few pieces stand out. And for this I'm using some Screaming Bell. And all I'm doing is just uh, going over this emblem in the centre of his head as well as his eyes. Now the eyes I'm not 100% set on, um, so maybe you guys can let me know down in the, uh, the comments what you think of the eyes being done with this. Um, the emblem here I think looks good, the eyes I'm not too sure. Um, I think they work, but at the same time I think the stone look was uh, just as good for them. Um, I think the cracks on the eyes are what sort of ruined the, the effect with it. But uh, obviously, it is what it is. So obviously, I'll do this and then I'll go over this with uh, a wash of non oil, just to sit into those recesses and uh, darken the uh, the metallic up a little bit. And then that will be the head done, and we can move on uh, with the rest of the terrain piece. Okay, so next up I'm going to work on the stairs and the main platform. Now I'm doing this in separate stages, so the head, the stairs, the platform and the railings. The railings are not fixed to the platform at this point um, due to the, what I hope you guys will agree, the awesome effect that I've done for them. So anyway, for the stairs and the platform and that, and the obviously the structural support, I wanted a bit more of a worn, um, weathered look. So first of all, I'm applying Dryad Bark to everything. Now the technique that I do for the stairs here is exactly the same as I do on the platform. So I won't show you guys the platform, we'll just focus on the stairs, but the technique is exactly the same, the paints are the same and everything. So first of all, a straight coat of um, Dryad Bark. And while that's still wet, I'm going to take some Bane Blade Brown and hopefully the camera picks this up. I'm applying it quite liberally to the uh, the centre area, which is where the lighter sort of dried out wood is going to be. And then towards the outer edges is going to be the dryad bark. Now what I'm doing, it, like I said, I'm trying to get this in the middle and blend it whilst it's still a little bit wet. If I find that the outside edge is drying up too much, then I'll just go back into that dryad bark, apply that to the edges, and again, blend that back into the middle. So hopefully you can see here that obviously as it's mixing in with that wet dryad bark, it's going a little bit darker, uh, but it's not, you know, nothing to worry about. I want it obviously to blend in nicely. So just try and mix it all in, back into the dryad bark here for the edges and uh, sort of wet blend them together. Now obviously if you're working in a sort of a warm, humid environment then uh, your paints may dry out a little bit too quick, in which case um, I would recommend dry brushing instead of the, uh, the wet blending here. Then once all that has dried, I take the same Bane blade, Bain blade Brown, and this time using a dry brush um, and removing barely any of the paint, I'm going to dry brush this over the centre area. And the idea is that this will uh, give a lighter um, area to that centre sort of strip. And the same will be done on the platform as well. Um, the theory behind it is the where the outside edges of the wood are attached to the supports is 
it's actually double wood there um, which will retain moisture a little bit more and so that will stay darker looking the center is going to dry out and wear away a little bit more as obviously that's where you're going to walk so essentially you want to have that lighter worn out drier look towards the center of wood and then sort of damper darker look to the outer edges or where you get um, cross beams and such that are going to keep retain a little bit more water between the two pieces of wood right and just like i did with the head i'm going to take some ethonian camo shade and essentially glaze this over the wood and obviously that's going to stain everything um, slightly green and the lighter areas are obviously going to pick that green up a little bit more than the darker areas now i'm not using this to shade recesses i will do the same as with the, the head and go in with the agrax earth shade here and um, obviously apply that straight in let that sit in those recesses and uh, that will stain those up nice whilst retaining that slightly green tint to the uh, the rest of the wood and then it's just a case of uh, letting it dry and then we can move on to the next step that will be all of the um, the main structure and the stairs done Okay, so for the railings here, I wanted to have the wooden spikes look as though they were pulled almost straight out of a fire. Um, so obviously they're gonna be charred and burnt on the outside. And then I wanted them to have that sort of hot ember glow on the inside. Um, the reason for this is the sculpt of the spikes themselves. Um, gave me an idea of one or two things either a very rough bark surface or the wood has obviously dried split and cracked as it's burning and you can see the hot glowing embers on the inside of the wood so what i'm doing first is applying a coat of abaddon black over all of the um the spikes and obviously the crossbar for them i'm not too worried about getting this on the skulls as obviously we'll go in and neaten all that up later but for now just get a nice even coat of black you could obviously as it was um separate pieces i could have sprayed, sprayed it black but to save a little bit of time and extra black paint which cost me more um as it's gw's brand that i use for the black um i decided to go in and just sort of brush it in by hand Okay, so what I'm doing now is I've taken some Corax white and I thin this down with water until it's, um, it's, it is quite runny, um, quite watery. And what I'm doing is applying this into some of those recesses. Um, I didn't want to do it on every um, recess on each piece, but um, you know, the majority of about 75% of the, the spikes. Um, and you can see here that what I'm doing is letting that water sit in there or that you know that white paint and then I'm using my fingers just to wipe along the surface and all this is going to do is remove some of that excess paint from um, the the top surface so you know the uh, the more raised up parts obviously all I want this to do is be the set for the um, the red yellow or orange yellow um, effect within this um, I'm not too worried about the white staining the um, the black grey or anything as obviously that can be fixed up um, a little bit later on but for now I'm just going around all three pieces both sides um, filling in these cracks and gaps with uh, this thin down white okay so I'm now mixing up a sort of a, a wash here using one drop of troll slayer orange and six drops of lamian medium um, the reason that i'm going to do this is obviously i need it quite thin to sit down into the white areas so the white areas have dried 
and I'm now using this mix to add in the orange into the pieces. Now with this, obviously I'm needing to mix up enough that I can get this into all the, um, all the white areas, but I'm also going to use this mix to change um, that orange a little bit, which I will explain in just a bit. So obviously for now, I'm just getting this into all of those white areas. Again, I'm not too worried about this sitting on the wood. Um, unlike the white, this is quite thin because of the Lamian medium and not water. Um, so this sits in nicely and it doesn't sort of stain the surface of the, the black too much. Um, so I'll go ahead and get all this in and whilst it's still wet, and this is the important part here, I will add a drop of aerial yellow to our mix and two to three drops, oh no, four drops of the Lamian medium obviously to thin it down again as the aerial yellow would have thickened it up a little bit. Now the reason we I need the orange still wet is that when I drop this into that wet orange um, that's within the wood, it's going to push that orange to the outside edges. And what I want to do is concentrate this within these um, the center areas of these and to leave that orange look on the outside edge. So that when this dries, it's going to have a very sort of yellow orange center with a red glow around the edge of it all. Um, so like I said, make sure that it stays wet. Luckily the Lamian medium does take about five to 10 minutes to dry anyway. So plenty of working time if you are quick enough with this and you can flip the model and do both sides at the same time. Um, you don't have to worry about it running out of those excess, uh, or sorry, out of those recesses. And then obviously once that's done, sit it aside and then leave it for about 10 minutes to fully dry and then we can move on with the next step. Right, and as you can see here, once that has dried, I'm taking some Abaddon Black and just very lightly dry brushing this over the top. Now I say lightly, obviously I'm using a bit of force here, but when I say lightly, I mean I don't have much paint on the bristles. Um, you can see that I'm dabbing it into the, uh, the palette there, um, but the palette doesn't have a huge amount of paint on there. And when I'm dabbing it, I'm actually dipping into the paint and then dabbing away from or into a, um, a drier area of the palette that is obviously the paint started to dry a little bit. Um, but the idea here is to obviously get rid of any of that white staining or orange and yellow staining on the wood and just bring it back to a nice solid black. Um, I will then do the same thing with the um, Dawnstone and just very lightly again go dry brush over the model, over all of those black areas, um, just trying to pick off some of those sort of sharper edges um, and some of those areas where I didn't put the embers in, sort of that glow into, um, that obviously I want those sort of edges of that to be a grey um, ashen kind of look obviously as the wood burns and then starts to cool you start to get that uh, sort of that white ash kind of look to it where it's um, obviously burnt away a little bit more and uh, usually the bits that you can break off very easily um, and sort of dust away that's the effect that I'm trying to get here so a burnt wood with the white ash dust type stuff still on it a little bit. Alright, so with the spikes almost done, I can now take some uh, wraith bone and apply this over all of the skulls. Obviously uh, it's a little bit thinned down um, and I want to get a, a good even coat on this coverage. Make sure to do uh, the underside of the the jaws and obviously the back of the skulls on the uh, the other side of the fence, the railings. But I'll, like I said, I'll go round and pick out all the skulls with this wraith, uh, yep, wraith bone, and then I can move on to the next stage. Okay, so for the 
ropes that are binding uh, the spikes together. I'm taking some Mornfang Brown as obviously with me having done these black instead of brown I wanted to bring a little bit of brown up into this um, so I wanted to make them look like they're made out of um, some sort of leather straps or hide or something um, and not just a regular rope they don't have the um, twist that rope has to it so this to me looks like it would have been made more with um, you know strips of leather or some sort of brown cordage or something so I'll go ahead and apply this to all of the uh, the rope on all three pieces. As I said, I'm showing one piece here, but obviously I'm doing uh, all three fences at the same time. Okay, so what I'm doing now is applying some Reichland Flesh Shade over the entire piece. Um, what I want this to do is obviously it's going to stain up the skulls and give them that reddish um, skull type look and obviously with the leather it's going to add a little bit of shade into the recesses but the reason I'm putting this on the spikes and over the glowing embers is it's going to tone down that yellow slightly but also brighten up the orange a little bit um, and bring the two a little bit more in line with each other. Um, and leave a little bit more of a, a nice sort of cooling ember um, effect to the to the wood. So obviously, like I said, I'll apply this all over um, each fence piece, both sides, let that dry, and then I can come back to the next step. Okay, so now what I'm doing is with a size one brush here, I want a little bit more of that ashen effect to um, some of the hard edges of the cracks and stuff that are within this wood. So all I'm doing is taking some Administratum Grey and just sort of brushing it along. This is very light brushing, um, not a lot of paint on the bristles, it's very similar to dry brushing but obviously the brush isn't designed for dry brushing. Um, areas such as along here obviously I'll use a little bit more paint and uh, you know I don't mind getting it in a few areas and then wiping it off it gives it that random sort of ashy type look to this burnt wood um, and takes away from it being just black painted wood so again I'll go around um, all three pieces and like I said, you can you know you can use this on any other terrain piece that you want this kind of look to. Um, but I'll go around all these pieces, and then we'll be back in a bit. All right, so I'm now taking some dryad bark and painting up the spikes at the top of each of these um, spikes. But uh, the idea is the wood hasn't obviously burnt all the way through. Those glowing embers are just on the inside of that outer burnt crust and then whoever's made this fence the idea is that they've taken um, a blade and cut the wood into these sharp spikes at the top and what that's going to do is cut down into some of that fresher wood that's on the inside the not burnt out stuff so again dryad bark over all of these top spikes and then on top of that once that's dried I will again very lightly brush over Bane Blade Brown, uh, making sure to concentrate it on those sort of four edges. Each spike seems to be a, a being cut into four sides. So those edges I will pick off with the Bane Blade Brown and then very lightly dust over it just to give it that sort of textured um, light wood kind of feel. Right, and finally, at this point, I've assembled the model and I'm just taking some iron breaker and going over any of the metallic parts on the model. Now, essentially, that is the uh, the metal plates that run around the bottom of each of the two legs here and then the nail heads that run throughout the piece. Um, there's a few on the, um, the diagonal arm supports, the braces that go up from the main leg to the platform and then the fence itself has each of the 
spikes has been nailed into a support behind it as well as into the um, the frame of the um, the platform and then over the top of this I'll uh, give it a light wash of non oil and that will be the piece finished now obviously on top of this you can go in and add any further um, weathering such as rust on these metallic parts you can add um, the moss effect that I've shown in previous uh, videos if you would like a quick tutorial just a short two to three minute um, video on that let me know down in the comments and I'll make just a very small um, focus video on how to do a cool moss effect um, using modeling flock and PVA um, but yeah essentially that's it um, the model is finished and there we have it guys one finished uh, Sigmarite head with uh, burnt out stakes for uh, railings. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope the uh, the burnt effect uh, comes in useful for any of your future projects. If you did enjoy the video hit that thumbs up and if you're not already subscribed please consider hitting that subscribe button and uh, until next time guys take it easy keep painting those minis.